Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is September 20, 2024. In this video, we are going to discuss three important articles. The first article is about FATF, that is Financial Action Task Force. This article says that India should increase the court system capacity in order to combat money laundering and terrorist financing. So, in this article, we are going to discuss about the basics of Financial Action Task Force, that is FATF. The second article is about US Federal Reserve has reduced the interest rates and how it will impact India and what is monetary policy, what are the basics of monetary policy. So, this is what we are going to see in the second article. The third article is about the White Revolution 2.0. In this context, we are going to discuss about the Operation Flood. So, these are the three articles we are going to discuss in this video. Let us get into the discussion. Now, look at this article. Union Home Minister Amit Shah has unveiled the plan for White Revolution 2.0. He introduced the standard operating procedure for White Revolution 2.0 and he said that this White Revolution will empower women and help to reduce malnutrition. So, in this context, let us discuss the basics about White Revolution and Operation Flood. The White Revolution was first introduced in India in 1970 under Dairy. The White Revolution was first introduced in India in 1970 under National Dairy Development Board. It was headed by Dr. Varghese Kurian and he was known as the father of White Revolution. The aim of this White Revolution is to increase the milk production improve the rural income and provide affordable milk. So, the ultimate goal of White Revolution is to increase the affordability, accessibility and availability of milk in India. This White Revolution was supported by World Bank. Operation Flood happened in three phases from 1970 to 1996. In these three phases, the White Revolution created National Milk Grid. The National Milk Grid means creating many cooperatives and connecting the rural farmers to urban consumers. So, thereby the rural farmers will have fair compensation for their milk and the urban consumers will have consistent supply of milk. So, it is beneficial for both rural farmers and urban consumers. Under White Revolution, a cooperative model for milk production is created. The best example is Amul. This cooperative model empowered rural farmers through cooperatives and gave them the ownership of milk production. The main objective of this cooperative model is eliminating the middlemen. It led to fair compensation and ensured fair prices for milk for consumers. It led to fair compensation for rural farmers and fair prices for consumers. Now, what are the achievements or contributions of this White Revolution? After White Revolution, India became the largest milk producer in the world. The production of milk increased from 20 million tons in 1968 to 100 million tons by 2006. Last year, India produced 220 million tons of milk and it is the top one milk producer in the world. Other important achievements include the White Revolution introduced improved cattle breeding varieties, high yield cattle breeds in India. It also introduced artificial insemination, modern technologies in milk production. Now, let us see what are the socio-economic impacts of White Revolution. The first one is empowerment. The White Revolution empowered millions of rural dairy farmers, especially women. So, thereby it leads to women empowerment. Next one is nutrition. By increasing the availability of milk and milk products in India, it led to improved nutrition levels in rural and urban households. Then about rural employment. It provided rural employment and uplifted the socio-economic status of rural households. So, these are the main achievements regarding socio-economic aspects. As we have seen in the news, Union Minister Amit Shah has introduced White Revolution 2.0. The first White Revolution helped to increase the affordability and availability of milk and this White Revolution 2.0 will focus on empowering women, enhancing the cooperatives and addressing the malnutrition. So, this White Revolution 2.0 will involve women in milk production and procurement. Thereby, it makes the milk production more inclusive and sustainable industry. It also aims to expand the dairy access and promote the healthy diets. So, this is about White Revolution 2.0. Now, let us discuss an MCQ question related to this topic. Which of the following are not correctly matched? Golden Revolution, Horticulture. Round Revolution, Beetroot. Pink Revolution, Meat. Yellow Revolution, Fish. The first and third one are correctly matched. Golden Revolution is related to horticulture. The pink revolution is related to meat. The second one, round revolution is related to potato production and not beetroot. So, this is incorrect. The fourth one, yellow revolution is related to edible oil seeds, not fish. So, the correct answer is option 2 and 4. Option B is the correct answer. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic. Now, look at this article. US Federal Reserve has reduced the interest rates and this might impact Indian investments. See, US Federal Reserve has reduced the interest rates by 0.5 percentage and this is the first reduction in interest rates since COVID-19 pandemic. So, this is aimed at boosting the economic growth in US. So, what does this mean? 
So, if the US Federal Reserve is reducing the interest rate means there is more money available for US companies. So, they will invest more in global market. It will also lead to increase in investment in India. So, this is an implication for India. Let us discuss about it. So, this action of US Federal State by reducing the interest rate is a monetary policy. So, monetary policy is an action of a central bank to control the money supply and interest rate. The goal of monetary policy is to control the inflation, maintain the price stability and increase the economic growth. There are two kinds of monetary policy cheap money policy and dear money policy. Cheap money policy is where the interest rates are lowered in order to encourage the borrowing and spending. Whereas the dear money policy is where the interest rates are increased to discourage the borrowing and spending. This is used to control inflation and this is used to increase the economic growth. So it is used when economic slowdown is happening or high unemployment is prevalent. This is used when there is high inflation and in order to control inflation, the central bank uses dear money policy. When there is economic slowdown, the central bank uses cheap money policy to boost the economic growth. So by using the cheap money policy, the money will be available more. So there is more availability of money. That is why it is called cheap money policy. When this policy is introduced, the money availability will be very less and there will be very high interest rate. So that is why it is called as dear money policy. So the impact of cheap money policy is increased investment and consumer spending because there will be more money available in the market. Then it also leads to economic growth and job creation. Since more money is available, it leads to more investment and job creation. But it has potential for leading to inflation if it is not managed well. Since there is more money available in the market, it might lead to inflation. In case of dear money policy, it will lead to reduced economic activity and it will control inflation. It also has potential for higher unemployment and reduced business investment. It means there is high potential for unemployment because there is less money available and there is less investment. So less investment means more unemployment. So this is the impact of dear money policy. Now what are their impacts on individuals and business? The cheap money policy will encourage spending on homes, cars, etc. Actually, cheap money policy generally increases the spending of individuals. But the dear money policy will discourage the spending because less money is available. Regarding to business, the cheap money policy promotes the expansion of business and investment. But the dear money policy will slow down the in but the dear money policy will slow down the growth and investment. Regarding inflation, the cheap money policy will lead to inflation. As I said, the cheap money policy will lead to more availability of money. So if there is more availability of money, in period of time, it will lead to inflation. In case of dear money policy, it will help to control inflation because it sucks money from the economy. Now, what is the impact of US Federal Reserve policy on India? As I have said earlier, the US Federal Reserve has decreased the interest rate. So if there is a decrease in interest rate, then more money will be borrowed by the companies. So more money will be available for the companies. So the company will start investing in the global market. As a part of global market, India will also get more foreign investment. So this is the impact of India regarding foreign investment. Regarding the impact on rupee value, if there is an increase in interest rate in US, it will strengthen the dollar. Thereby, it will weaken the rupee. And this leads to increased import cost in India. Regarding RBI policy, if there is a change in interest rate in US, it may also affect the RBI's monetary policy. Now let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. Which of the following statement is correct regarding the monetary policy measures? Cheap money policy involves lowering interest rate to stimulate borrowing and economic activity. Contractionary monetary policy involves increasing interest rate to control inflation and reduce economic growth. Here the both statements are correct. The cheap money policy involves lowering the interest rate and it will stimulate borrowing and economic activity. Yes, this statement is correct. The contractionary monetary policy involves increasing the interest rate. Yes, this statement is also correct. It also controls inflation and reduces economic growth. So the correct answer is option C, both 1 and 2. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now look at this article, Financial Action Task Force has said that India should increase their court system capacity. See, there are many pending cases in India related to money laundering and terrorist financing. So in order to deal with the cases, the court system in India must be increased and their capacity should be enhanced. So this is recommended by Financial Action Task Force. So in this context, let us discuss about FATF. The Financial Action Task Force was created during G7 summit in Paris in 1989. The objective of FATF is to combat money laundering, terrorist financing and the threats to global financial system. So the two important objectives are combating the money laundering and terrorist financing in its member nations. At present it has 39 member countries 
and India is also a member of FATF. India joined FATF in 2010 and FATF was created during 1989. It means India was not a founding member of FATF. See, it was created in Paris during G7 summit and the headquarters is also located at Paris. So, this is the basic information about FATF. Now, what are the functions and responsibilities of FATF? It issues 40 guidelines regarding AML and CFT. Here, AML means anti-money laundering and CFT means combating finance for terrorism. It also conducts peer reviews to assess the country's efforts regarding money laundering and terrorist financing. FATF maintains two lists. One is black list and another one is grey list. The countries which do not cooperate regarding the combating money laundering and terrorist financing are kept in black list. So, the non-cooperative countries are kept in black list. And then there is grey list. The countries which do not properly maintain the guidelines for anti-money laundering and combating terrorist financing are kept under grey list. So, these countries are continuously monitored by FATF. India is not on this list. Let us discuss an MCQ question related to this topic. FATF was established by United Nations to combat terrorist financing. This statement is incorrect because FATF was created under G7 summit in 1989 in Paris. India is a member of FATF. This is correct. But India is not a founding member of FATF. Please note that FATF's recommendation are legally binding on its member countries. This is incorrect. It is not legally binding. It is only a recommendatory. So, option 1 and 3 are incorrect. So, the correct answer is option C. With this, let us conclude the discussion. Now, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.